Hello, dear listeners. If you know me, you know that I'm super passionate about making English projects on niche things that I really dig. Shout out to Syracuse University Project Advance English for allowing me to write about vaporwave, theaterism, Breaking Bad, Watsky, and so much more. So, when the final project was announced to be a video about representations of disability in film, I knew I had one last shot to expose Miss McNish and whoever else is watching this to one more of my many passions. And, duh, my favorite movie of all time. My tied for favorite movie of all time totally manifested itself. It's such a beautiful day. This 2013 full-length animated feature by artist Don Hertzfeld is actually a compilation of three short films that chronicle the life of Bill, a simple everyman who falls victim to an unnamed mental disorder. It's implied to be schizophrenia or a brain tumor, but the viewer can't know for sure. Bill was given a new booklet at the clinic discussing potential memory loss in his treatment. Inside was a cartoon character saying, I don't know about you folks, but I could lose my keys eating breakfast. Later in the film, Bill is indeed shown to have memory loss, as well as a slew of other unsettling issues. Bill took a walk in the park to try and get some fresh air. He noticed somebody had written, I love you, in the playground sand, and he thought that was really beautiful. As he continued on, a sudden drip of urine shot down his pant leg. That was unexpected. Then some little fat kid with a deformed foot tried to sell him a magazine subscription. Bill looked at the list of magazines for sale and angrily wondered why they didn't offer any Asian porn. Then he wondered why he wondered that. On his way to the clinic, he found he had a little trouble understanding Even his pamphlet seemed different. The guy next to him at the bus stop had the head of a cow, but Bill pretended not to notice. His doctor said he had some discouraging news. The latest tests ruled out the possibility of further surgeries, and his current treatment didn't seem to be making any progress. He wanted to start Bill on something new. He couldn't think of any reason why he should be seeing things, though. Ask him a series of questions. Actually, the viewer can't know much for sure about this movie. Hertzfeld's writing style is intentionally vague and a lot is left to be questioned towards the end and throughout the course of the movie. For me, it's a total feel-good movie. Take this clip for example, which is right after Bill finds out his illness is terminal. No longer even exists, but whose ancient light is just reaching an impression from a ghost, an amazing infinite time machine every night above his head that he's ignored for most of his life. He wants to stop people in the street and say, isn't this amazing? Isn't everything amazing? For others, it's a lot more of a downer. Most people I know have been physically discomforted by the movie so much they had to turn it off within 10 minutes. And that got me wondering, what makes this seemingly milquetoast man elicit such strong feelings on both ends of the spectrum in different people? Is it his disability? Or is it the fact that Bill's world is radically alien from our own? Or because it's uncomfortably identical to ours? I propose it's this. It's because Bill is all of us. Maybe it's just because I point to inanimate objects and say, me, a lot, or because I, too, have a stick figure doppelganger. But Bill is definitely relatable. It's really obvious in his little quirks and blunt one-liners. Bill picked up his new medication, went home, and masturbated for seven hours. But Hertzfeld does so much more than just that to give the viewer some common ground with Bill. So how does Don Hertzfeld establish Bill as relatable? Firstly, he's animated simply. Anyone can see his or herself in his simple form. He says what you're thinking, and it raises the questions of whether the disability is unfiltering him. In the supermarket, Bill was always very careful to select fruit from only the back of the produce piles, as the fruit in the front was at crotch level to the other customers. Bill is presumably white. He's also male, and he's established to be straight. This subs subsequently reflects the larger societal narrative of privilege, giving voices to those who are in power i.e. white, straight, male. Even though Bill is disabled himself, his status
us as a straight white male, the societal norm, asserts to the viewer that he's just like them. Additionally, Bill reflects mainstream biases by consistently introducing and referring to other marginalized characters by their disability or by their margin to discrimination. An old man who smelled of gasoline held up an onion and said, Big onion. The checkout counter, Bill found himself behind a big guy. Then some little fat kid with a deformed foot. In that moment, Bill thought she looked really old. Or a nice kid with a skin condition. A little boy in the special class with aluminum hook arms. This makes the viewer relate to Bill in that, most likely, they noticed the disability of an individual before anything else about them. But perhaps the most effective way that Hertzfeld humanizes Bill is in his existentialism, echoing the deepest fears of every viewer. When faced with the prospect of his own death, Bill goes through the motions of what society tells him to do in order to leave a legacy and to make amends. But it's all robotic. His dissociation is so strong that he doesn't even know what he's doing at times. He gives a name on a paper that's not in his handwriting to the front counter. And a frail old man is being wheeled to see him now. A man who's been here for over ten years, but rarely had a visitor. Neither of these two people remember why they're there, or who exactly this other person is. But they sit, and they watch a game show together. And when it's time for Bull to leave, he stands and says something beautiful to him. And neither of them understand what he means exactly, but the old man begins to cry anyway, and they will never see each other again. And Bill revels in the anticlimactic nature of death. Message on the answering machine. That was sorry to inform him his mother had just died that morning. They said she'd launched into a fit of senile hysterics after skipping her medication and was hit by a train. She'd reserved her own funeral plot years in advance in order to be buried alongside her parents, but due to a clerical error had to be placed 50 yards away, between a coffin full of rocks and a rich woman's golden retriever. So much of this clip lends itself to analysis, from the fact that Bill's disorder is genetic and his mother also experienced mental illness, to the fact that it was something as silly as a clerical error that made his mother be buried in the wrong spot, to the fact that the front line it could be a backhanded reference to Albert Camus, The Stranger, in which the first line is this. Even though the world is meaningless and attempts at immortality are futile, Bill tries to savor the world that will forget him as soon as he leaves it. This underlying philosophy, however seemingly desolate and pitiful, asserts the film as essentially absurdist. This school of thought, which describes the absurd as the rift between our attempts to pin meaning on the universe versus the actual meaninglessness of the universe, was largely pioneered by French philosopher Albert Camus. In fully embracing this belief, Bill is shown to be just as vulnerable and afraid of our universe as all of us. This further humanizes him, and as the lack of meaning in an apathetic universe is something that haunts us all. But it's a positive kind of meaninglessness. Through the uncaring nature of the universe is reiter reiterated time and time again, the film also stresses the great things about living and experiencing day-to-day -day life. It's a rare brand of positive nihilism. When the audience sees themselves in Bill, his unnamed condition becomes more sympathetic. His disability is not seen as an afterthought, nor as a basis for discrimination, but rather something that could happen to any of us, and subsequently removes a morbid fascination that often plagues representations of disabled people. We gawk at people with disabilities because they represent an incongruency in the human form. Subsequently, representations of disability often, often emphasize the disability, not the individual. It's entertaining to stare at the unsightly, the satisfyingly gross, the limitations and the shortcomings of the human body. Hell, that's why TLC is still in business. But fleshing Bill out as a relatable character, we do not objectify or scoff at his disability. We turn inwards, wondering what would happen if we were given Bill's fatal diagnosis, and we started to undergo the mental trauma that he is going through. For most viewers, this introspection manifests in fear. Fear of death, fear of losing agency over one's body and thoughts, or fear of losing treasured relationships. And it is, it's scary. 
It's Such a Beautiful Day is really a breathtaking film. It's funny, heartfelt, and allows the viewer to feel vulnerable by seeing the world from a disabled character's perspective. I really can't do it justice with just one video. There are so many clips I wanted to include, so you really need to see it for yourself. It exploits the thoughts, existential anxieties, and biases of every viewer to create a decadently unsettling narrative that the viewer can relate with. It's a tasteful representation of disability that doesn't paint mentally ill people as dangerous, but doesn't glorify the disorders themselves.